Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 13. Uh, this lesson is covering December 19 to December 25 of 2020. Our topic, this uh, lesson is about heaven, education, and eternal learning. But before we start, let's uh, pray. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come to you, Lord. We humble ourselves. Be merciful to us. Forgive us, Lord, from all our sins. Please pour your Holy Spirit as we study your word. We cannot understand anything or remember anything without the Holy Spirit, Lord. We totally depend on you in our learning. Please teach us, Lord, to be like you. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, our topic is very nice. I am very excited and very enthusiastic because it is about heaven. It is about education and eternal learning. With me here is Dr. Tess Mam Bilarmino and Sir Ryan Abbas. Okay, thank you for, for making uh, for being available to help us with this lesson, Paul. Uh, so. Uh, to summarize a little bit our lesson, it is about heaven. You know, the end of everything is like the end of the year. The end of everything is, for those who are faithful, is heaven. And since we are talking about education, we are going to continue our education, our learning in heaven. And we have such a great teacher, eternal learning. And even if we die, we don't have any problem because we will be resurrected. Okay, let's go to our... Memory text, 1 Corinthians 2.9, it says, But it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So this is a very, very nice uh, text. Now, for Sunday lesson, let's ask Sir Ryan, if we die, sir, what is our hope? of going into eternal life. Tell us, what does the Bible say? Okay. Thank you very much, Brother Wynn, for that question. You know what, my brothers and sisters, many people believe in different ways about death. Some people believe that when they die, the end is already there. But some also believe that there will be another, uh, another or continuity of life. But the good thing about the Bible is that it is full of hope. So Christians like us can have a hope that will be uh, the assurance of each one who are living right now. So if we will be reading from the Bible, from John chapter 6, verse 54, it says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. That's the good news, my brothers and sisters. There's an eternal life which is to be offered to all of us. And I will raise him up at the last day. So we can be assured that there will be life after death. And this verse from John 3.16 speaks about, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So I think that's the good news of all. We will be receiving everlasting life okay and then if we will be reading other verses we can read from 1st John 5 13 these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life so this is again eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God so as you would notice, Brother Wynn and Sister Tess, there is eternal life that is being offered by our God. So death is not the end of itself. There is a lot more coming for those who will be believing in the name of Jesus Christ. And also for 1 Timothy 1.16, we can read, However, for this reason I obtain mercy, that in me first, Jesus Christ might show all long-suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. As you would see, you know? everlasting life will always be there. For John 4.14, 4, But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life so there are lots 
of Bible verses that are talking about everlasting life. And this is the will of Him. This is from John 6.40, who sent me that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life, and I will raise Him up at the last day. So this is the good news for each one of us. So we have nothing to worry about death. We can face death with confidence as long as we have Jesus Christ in our lives. As I continue from Jude 21, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Another good news. Titus 3.7 also says something about eternal life. That having been justified by His grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of what? Eternal life again. Okay, from Hebrews 1 verse 2. Has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. And then from Acts 17, verse 28, For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are all his offspring. Okay. So I think that's the answer, Brother Win, for your question, that what would happen after death, there is an assurance that will be coming from the Lord. Thank you, sir. So on the Monday lesson, actually there's so much uh, powerful verses there that all who believe in God, uh, God will resurrect, and uh, so on and so forth, that God created us in the first place anyway. So actually, there, we don't have anything to worry about. Yes. Our exams, our money, etc., whether we die or we get sick, this life is so little. Do you have anything to say, ma'am? Yes, because it's a new existence. We are all aiming for that new world, a new world for us with all the heavens. The transformation is already there, and it's a kind of like a totality of what we have prepared here on earth for that new existence. I want to listen to Sir Abbas for this. Okay. So when we talk about a new existence, our God is so good. He is so loving, and He wants the best for us. That's why when we, when we are to be converted and our bodies will be changed from mortality to immortality, this is the situation that we will be facing in the new heavens and the new earth. This will be coming from Revelation 21 verse 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. I cannot imagine the world without sin anymore. Without, without decay, without violence. So our minds cannot speak it right now on how beautiful would it be to face that kind of place. And... Also in Revelation 21 verses 1 to 6, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. So it means that everything will be restored by God to its original Condition. Sir, can you explain a little bit the no more tear, no more tears from there? God yes. will wipe away every tears. Because right now in the sinful situation of this planet, all of us are experiencing crying due to some reasons, perhaps because of death, because of sicknesses. But when we go to heaven, when Jesus will redeem us, there will be no more tears, no more death, no more suffering. So everything, I imagine, will be very happy. Thank you. Mom, you have something? Yeah, I believe in that. Because with God, 
How could you see sorrow there? There is only the, the glory. We can visualize even right now the glory of God. So why, why would you, we expect sorrow and crying there when you can only see the glory of God? Yeah, one more thing I want to see, I want to, I'm so happy to see here is all things are new. Imagine if you go yes. to a new house or you have a new car, but there, imagine the whole world is new. Yes, sir. Wow, so if you want to buy a new cell phone or a new camera, or you, you look happy, you will be happy. But imagine in heaven, everything is new. Yes. Wow, so that's over, over, really, it's, the joy is overflowing. The I would just like to have this great example when we are about to go to a new place. Like we are expecting beautiful things to see beautiful places. What more would you expect when you are having heaven in your mind? Because everything is new, everything is wonderful. What could be a higher word, a superlative degree for the word beautiful? Well, only God, only the Holy Spirit can provide for that word. But in our hearts, we must build that kind of expectation, like beyond imagination, because only God can provide that kind of new heaven and new earth. Yes, ma'am. Actually, we actually don't, we only have a small view of that. The Bible says that we, we don't actually know anything. It's only very small. And we go to the Tuesday lesson. It says, then shall we know things that means we, we don't know many things so let's read it says here in uh, chapter 35 they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads wow you know what uh, uh if you want to see some artista or some great people you know you want to see them right or some great preacher you want to be friends with them but here we they shall see his face we are going to see god you know how Moses wanted to see God, but he, he couldn't see. Now we are going to see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. I think this is worth everything. You know, how to see God, our boss, the one who invented us, who forgave us from our many, many sins. Let me continue to read. Heaven is a school. It's field of study, the universe. So e there is a university of heaven. And the teacher is the infinite one capital i capital o a branch of this school was established in heaven and the plan of redemption accomplished education will again be taken up in the eden school so if you're taking up classes now actually you're continuing that in heaven so uh, you should love education the bible says study to show yourself approved unto god one more thing in first uh, corinthians 2 9 it says, I has not seen. So you see, we don't know. Actually, sometimes we can imagine heaven is like this, but Bible says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Only through his word can a knowledge of these things be gained, and even this affords but a partial revelation. Grabe. The prophet of Patmos Thus describes the location of the school of the hereafter. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Uh, sir, do you know who is, pra who, who is talking? I think this is John, right? Yes, okay. John the Revelator. John the Revelator saw a new heaven and new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Revelation 21, 1 and 2. And the city had no need of sun. But I think there's a sun because you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh day. But no need because it was bright, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did light in it, and the lamb is the light thereof. Revelation 21, 23. Between the school established in Eden, Eden at the beginning and the school of the hereafter, there lies the whole compass of world's history. Genesis to Revelation. We will understand everything now. A history doesn't even fit in our mind. We forget who is, we, sometimes we forget our past, we make the same mistakes. But in heaven, we will understand the whole history of the world. The history of human transgression and suffering, of the, and suffering of divine sacrifice and of victory over death and sin. Not all conditions of that first school of Eden will be found in the school 
of the future life. No tree of knowledge of good and evil will afford opportunity for temptation. No tempter is there. Praise the Lord. No possibility of wrong. That is from Nahum 1.9, I think, sir, right? Every character has withstanded, withstood the testing of evil and none are no longer susceptible to its power. Uh, my, some of my friends says, if you get uh, burnt, you don't want to put your hand on the fire again. So that's uh, one uh, crude example of what happens. To him that overcometh, Christ, Christ says, will I give to it of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Revelation 2, 7. The giving of the tree of life in Eden was conditional, and it was finally withdrawn. But the gift of the future life are absolute and eternal. Amen. Amen. You want to say something, sir? Yes, so I agree with you, Brother Win, as what you have read. So there are so many wonderful things that God will offer His children. Imagine a life without sin, a life without sickness, a life without tears, and everything that will be good. So that's the gift of God for all His children. Yes, in, actually the prophet beholds the river of water of life clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And on this side of the river and on the side, on that was the, side, the tree of life. And there shall be no more death. Okay. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You know, Revelation 22, 21, 22 are the picture of heaven. The people there shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Restored to his presence, man will again, as at the beginning, be taught of God. My people shall know my name, and they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. So, like in Garden of Eden, God went to them every day, right, talking to them, and that will be, uh, I think, this is what the verses say. The tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Revelation 21, 3. In 1 Corinthians 13, 12, this is the very important Bible text. Now we see through a glass, darkly, but then, in heaven, we will see face to face. Now we know in part, but then shall we know, even as we are known. 1 Corinthians 13 12 okay we will see god face to face and those who have uh, poor eyesight okay we will see in heaven praise the lord okay so mom tell us more about the school in heaven so the school in the hereafter we are all doing our studies here on earth we are striving to reach or attain a degree pursue another knowledge. But in heaven, it's different. It's the wisdom from God. It's the school where we continue our learning, unlike this here on earth. The learning there is different because it's higher and more applicable to our lives. Because we, in the first reading of the verses that Sir Abbas mentioned, for Sundays and Mondays readings, he's talking about everlasting life, eternal life. And this is where we are to prepare here on earth for the school hereafter. We cannot just be there in that school without preparations. Our destiny to be in that school hereafter must be here on earth. We are determining our destiny through our preparations, through our character, which we build in Jesus. We can only attain this kind of, of faith or life on the school hereafter if we have the true preparation. Just like in the Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, which says, For our light's affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. 
For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So if we aim for that higher grades or mania cum laude or soma cum laude awards, they're just temporary. Now I understand with that school hereafter, there's summa cum laude is higher than that. They are not superficial. It is written and the wisdom is from heaven, the wisdom is from God. We are being led by the Holy Spirit. So why aspire for those things? We are only to prepare, to prepare. So we must be there on that school. Another verse to, to confirm with that is in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. It's mentioned there that he who has ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And then again in Revelation chapter 7, verses 14 to 17, it says that, and I said to him, Sir, you know, so he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This has been mentioned every now and then. Wiping away every tear from our eyes. And the Lamb who is Jesus Christ will be the one to, to pave the way for our for our life there. He will be the one who will take care of us. And then moving on to Thursday's lesson, it's the great teacher. Who is the great teacher? It's only Jesus Christ. It's so God. And then in Matthew, he says, then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, further in Mark 4, chapter 4, verse 2, then he taught them many things by parables and said to them in his teaching, and he was teaching daily in the temple, but the chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people sought to destroy him. And as I'm, I'm a teacher by profession, and having Jesus Christ as the master teacher, he's the great teacher. I'm always using these parables to, to my students, to every lesson that I have. In fact, I've written something in the Seventh-day Adventist circle in, in our international blogs, website, I have there the nature of teaching grammar with English and the Bible and nature. So I'm always using these parables which Jesus taught us. And it is very, very profound. It's just easy to understand. And all these things are in an analogy or making a metaphor so students can easily understand. Jesus is our great teacher. Mom, you know what? In, in Zechariah 13, it says here that the teacher has experience because he has wounds in his arms and in his side. I, yeah? The Bible. So we will actually see Jesus. Oh, he, he is not just an uh, academic. He has actually practical experience, you know, like the center of salvation. So it's really amazing. Mom, you can continue, please. Then he will answer those which, with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. We are not just friends. We are ears. We are children. We are the love of Christ. In the Bible, the inheritance of the saved is called a country. It's Hebrews 11, 14 to 16. There, the heavenly shepherd leads his flock to fountains of living waters. It, is, it will be Jesus who will be leading us there. The tree of life yields its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the service of the nation. So this connotation is about provision, like every day, everything is well provided for. There are ever-flowing streams who will not go thirsty nor hungry, clear as crystal, and beside them waving trees cast their shadows upon the paths prepared for the ransom of the Lord. 
There the wide-spreading plains swell into hills of beauty, and the mountains of God rear the lofty summits. On those peaceful plains, beside those living streams, God's people, I want to claim this one, all of us will be there, so long pilgrims and wanderers shall find a home. So it is not just a simple home, a home of glory, because God owns that home for us. My people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, and in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. Are we restful here now that we have COVID-19 virus? <laughs> no, every now and then we are, we are fearful. So violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting no destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. They shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build, and another inhabit. They shall not plant, and another eat. No, mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. We will be enjoying on what we will be doing, and we will be harvesting the fruits of our labor there. There the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the, des shall, the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the little child shall lead them. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. You know what? Sometimes I see, I watch National Geographic, and I see beast versus beast. They are eating each other, predators and prey. And I remember this, all of this suffering and all this pre predator is because of our sin. True. But when God erases all the sin, all of those lions, they will be kind. They're so, friends. Yes. They will be our friends. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. They will be seated beside us. We can even like talk to them, pamper them, nurture them, because we are friends. They're just like us. They're no longer animals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pain cannot exist in the atmosphere of heaven. Praise God. There will be no more tears. Again, we're, we keep on mentioning no more tears, no funeral trains, no badges of mourning. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, for the former things are passed away. The inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. And so many people are sick. I've been praying. I have so many prayer requests in the morning or even nighttime. They would ask me, please pray for me. Please pray for my daughter, for my son, like this. So there in the new heaven and earth, we don't have all these things. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Oh, thank you and praise God. Yes, ma'am. Not only forgiven, they will repent. And the, the reason we are sick is because we don't obey the health laws, right? Yes, true. <laughs> so true, true, true. people who are in heaven, we have, we have to learn how to obey the health laws, obey what food we can eat and we cannot eat. And because that was where we failed the first time. And actually, it says here, there will be no more death. So everybody is vegetarian there <laughs> because there is no more death. So that is one thing we can uh, start training, you know. And they're preparing our mind. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So there is the new Jerusalem, the metropolis of the glorified new earth, a crown of heaven in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. The nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, saith the Lord. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. We can claim we are really daughters and sons of God. Because God himself declared we are his own children. And he is preparing these things for us. Our role is to really prepare too, just right now, here on earth. 
the preparation is not right now. There, immortal minds will contemplate with never failing delight in the wonders of creative power, the mysteries of redeeming love. Now only Jesus can provide. He died on the cross for us. There will be no cruel, deceiving foe to tempt to forgetfulness of God because our minds are focused on him. So why should we forget? Every faculty will be developed, every capacity increased. That's the school thereafter. The development of everything, knowledge, faculty, abilities, your, your skills will be elevated. The acquirement of knowledge will not weary the mind or exhaust the energies. Wow, we were not going yeah. to get tired studying. Oh, I want to go to heaven, mom. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to go to heaven someday, hopefully. I, I have so many like moments or hours of counseling because students are really depressed about studying. Actually, I want to study so many things, but I don't have enough energy and time. When I saw this one, we will not be exhausted in our studying. Wow, I want to go to heaven. That's the school hereafter, sir. It's not here yet on earth. So there the grandest enterprises may be carried forward. The loftiest aspirations reached. Do you have your loftiest aspirations right now? <laughs> the highest ambitions realized. This is not yet our highest here on earth. We still have the on earth in heaven. And still there will arise new heights to surmount, new wonders to admire, new truths to comprehend, fresh objects to call, forth the powers of mind and soul and body. Do you think our hearts can contain all these beautiful promises? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, it, we cannot comprehend everything right now, but when we go to heaven with Jesus, everything will be explained, everything will be revealed to us, Sister Tess and Brother Wynn. Amen. All the treasures of the universe will be open to the study of God's redeemed. So we are the redeemed now. Unfettered by mortality, they wing their tireless flight to worlds of horror, worlds that thrilled with sorrow at the spectacle of human woe, and rang with songs of gladness at the tidings of ransom soul. You know what? I just saw, I'm sorry to interrupt. I saw the, the tireless flight. You know, I have been flying a drone, and you know, it will run only 10 minutes or 20 minutes. But when I fly the drone, it's very nice to see the footage of the drone. But I, I tell my Adventist friends who are also into drone, you know, in heaven, we are going to fly without low battery, without no GPS signal. We are going to fly and tireless into other worlds afar. Wow, it's so nice, really. I'm so excited when I see this. Mom, can you please? Amen. So, with unutterable delight, the children of earth enter into the joy and the wisdom of unfallen beings. <laughs> they share the treasures of knowledge and understanding gained through ages upon ages in contemplation of God's handiwork. With undamed vision, they gaze upon the glory of creation. So this is not yet all the glory. It's still there in the hereafter. Suns and stars and systems all in their appointed order, circling the throne of the deity. Upon all these things, from the least to the greatest, the Creator's name is written, and in all are the riches of His power displayed. We must be there. The great controversy is ended. Sin and sinners are no more. Praise God for this. The entire universe is clean. One pulse of harmony and gladness beats through the vast creation. From him who created all flow life and lights and gladness. Life, lights, and gladness. It's perfect, right? What else could you ask God for? It's everything throughout the realms of illimitable space. From the minutest atom, atom to the greatest world, all things animate and inanimate in their unshadowed beauty and perfect joy. Declare that God is love. All right. Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Father in heaven, we are so thankful this day because you have reminded us 
on the things that we will be enjoying in heaven, the forever learning experience together with you as our God and to Jesus, our Savior. We are praying, Lord, that you will prepare our lives. Help us to have this kind of heavenly experience in this earth and to be continued eternally in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom, for the knowledge and everything. And we are also asking for the forgiveness of all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.